Irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic functional gastrointestinal disorder. It is called functional disorder, which means it mainly involves the dysfunction of the gastrointestinal system without any structural damage. Symptoms of IBS mainly involve abdominal pain and discomfort with altered bowel habits. This is more common in women, and it can be found in people under the age of 50. The severity of symptoms is variable in the individuals. A few may have mild symptoms. However, a few suffer with more complications that affect their lifestyle. IBS is considered a disorder of improper communication between your gut and the brain. That results in altered bowel habits. In this video, we will see what the symptoms of IBS are. What are the different causes producing this condition? What is FODMAP? Which type of food can induce the symptoms? What are the differences in the symptoms in individuals? Which type of food should be avoided? And what are the possible treatment options? All such things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let's see the causes for this irritable bowel syndrome. IBS may be involved with altered gut motility. In a few people, the gut motility may be too rapid, resulting in the development of diarrhea. However, in a few people, the gut motility is reduced, leading to the development of constipation. This makes difficulty passing stools. It all depends on how colon muscles contract and relax. Normally, there is a regular coordination between these contractions and relaxations of colon muscles. However, it is impaired in people with IBS. These contractions become irregular, leading to irregular bowel movements and abdominal discomfort. IBS may also be due to the development of hypersensitivity. Few people are highly sensitive towards gut stimuli. So even though they're taking a similar type of food, they're highly sensitive compared with other people. Due to increased gut response, they may have abdominal pain and bloating. Some individuals may have increased sensitivity towards the pain and discomfort in the intestine. So even if the stimuli are mild, they can perceive high pain and abdominal discomfort. If it is untreated, this hypersensitivity may be enhanced, leading to strong symptoms of IBS. The third reason may be altered communication between the gut and brain. A miscommunication between the central nervous system and the gastrointestinal system results in the altered bowel habits. Sometimes people may have constipation or diarrhea, or both can be observed alternatively. The brain and gut communicate through neuronal as well as hormonal signaling. Any disturbance in this neuronal or hormonal communication leads to the development of IBS. The brain involves the central nervous system, and the gut involves the enteric nervous system. The miscommunication between these two nervous systems may develop the symptoms of IBS. Very rarely, IBS is associated with intestinal inflammation. A low-grade inflammation, particularly after infections, may result in the development of IBS. Stress can also lead to irregular bowel movements. In people with chronic stress conditions, it may alter the gut motility and develop the symptoms of IBS. Stress can further worsen the symptoms in the people with pre-existing IBS. Other psychological disorders like anxiety and depression can also increase the risk. Few people may develop IBS after a severe infection that involves the digestive tract. Gut bacteria are protective bacteria that fight against infections and they produce a healthier environment in the gut. But in a few situations like overuse of antibiotics or infections, this gut flora is going to be eroded. This causes an imbalance in the gut bacteria and it is called dysbiosis. This may affect your bowel habits and their sensitivity. So in people with significant loss of gut bacteria, the bowel habits may be altered, leading to the development of IBS. IBS can also be developed after any infection in your gastrointestinal tract. Generally, these infections may be possible with food poisoning, where either bacterial or protozoal infections can be ingested into your gastrointestinal tract along with the food. However, these infections may develop few symptoms, like diarrhea. After eradication of this infection, people may still have altered gut motility, leading to post-infectious IBS symptoms. Food sensitivity is another common trigger for the development of IBS. Few of the people are highly sensitive towards few of the food materials. Lactose can induce intolerance. Food rich in gluten can also induce the symptoms of IBS. High intake of caffeine may develop altered gut motility in a few people. It all depends on individual hypersensitivity and how well their gut and brain axis is communicated. Spicy foods can also alter this communication and produce irritation in your stomach and intestines. Therefore, food intolerances are another important risk factor for developing IBS. A family history may be associated with IBS. 
Such people are highly sensitive towards a mild stimulus, and even if they are taking a mild food, they can develop the symptoms of IBS. Another reason for the development of IBS is the overgrowth of small intestinal bacteria. Either an increase in the number or a change in the type of bacteria in the small intestine can disrupt the digestion, leading to IBS. Alteration in the composition and balance of gut bacteria also contributes to this condition. Irritable bowel syndrome can be stimulated by fermentable foods. Carbohydrates are playing a key role in developing IBS symptoms by fermentation. There may be oligosaccharides, disaccharides, and monosaccharides. Similarly, sugar alcohols are classified as polyols. These types of food are fermented, and they are classified as FODMAP. Here, F indicates fermentable O oligosaccharides, D disaccharides, and M monosaccharides, and P indicates polyols. So FODMAP is the fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. This type of food can develop the sensitivity and induce the symptoms of IBS, leading to bloating, gas, and abdominal pain. A low FODMAP diet can alleviate the symptoms like bloating, gas, abdominal pain, and changes in bowel habits. It also helps to identify a specific food that triggers the symptoms of IBS. However, it is very important to maintain a nutritional balance while taking low FODMAP. Now let us see the symptoms of IBS. IBS mainly shows gastrointestinal symptoms and changes in bowel habits. The symptoms may vary in their intensity and frequency. They are also variables in the individuals. They may be triggered by stress, certain types of foods, and other risk factors. One of the important symptoms is the abdominal pain and cramping. People with IBS may have discomfort in their abdomen with abdominal pain and cramping. This pain may be relieved after a bowel movement. The intensity and location of the pain may be variable. Pain may be increased after taking the food. Mucus can be observed in the stools, which is common in IBS. However, it is not that significant and serious. The second symptom is the change in the bowel habits. People may have loose and watery stools due to increased gum motility. This is called diarrhea predominant IBS. However, a few people may have symptoms of constipation with difficulty passing the stools. Such a type, when only constipation is observed, is called constipation predominant IBS. However, in a few individuals, these bowel habits may be alternatively changed for a few days. They may have loose and watery stools followed by a difficulty passing the stools for a few following days. People may feel incomplete evacuation after a bowel movement. This may produce abdominal discomfort. Another symptom is the bloating and gas. They may have a feeling of fullness and distension in their abdomen. It also involves increased gas formation and flatulence. A few other symptoms, like nausea and mucus in the stools, can also be observed. A feeling of urgency to defecate immediately is also another symptom. Tiredness and fatigue can be observed. Back pain is also observed in few people. Urinary symptoms like increased urinary frequency, urgency, and difficulty emptying the bladder are also associated with IBS. Few symptoms may be serious and significant. If you are having unintentional weight loss in IBS, it indicates a significant problem with your digestive system. The presence of rectal bleeding also indicates a difficulty passing the stools. However, this symptom may also be temporarily observed in a few people while putting more pressure during defecation. When these symptoms are more persistent during the night, it may indicate a serious condition. Decreased hemoglobin levels leading to anemia and inflammation in the colon all indicate serious symptoms. People with a family history of colorectal cancer are at more risk for serious complications. In such cases, a few blood tests and imaging tests may be done to check the condition of your colon. Now, let's see the various treatments for IBS. When the symptoms are mild, the lifestyle modifications along with diet control are sufficient. Taking a low FODMAP diet is one of the key treatments for IBS. You have to avoid the food that triggers IBS. Avoiding caffeine, spicy foods, and alcohol may be helpful to a few people. Taking the meals at regular times with adequate hydration can relieve the symptoms. Regular exercise can improve digestion. Stress reduction is another way to relieve the symptoms. Few of the medications can also be used for IBS. However, the treatment depends on which type of symptoms are predominating. Antispasmodics like dicyclamine and hyacine can be used to relieve the abdominal cramps. Laxatives like polyethylene glycol and lactulose are used for IBS constipation. Secretagogues like lubuprostone, linaclotide are also used to relieve chronic constipation. 
Serotonin agonists like tegacerid and percalipride are used to increase gum motility. In case of diarrhea, antidiarrheals like lopiramide can be used. Bile acid binders like cholestyramine and colcevalum can be used for bile acid-related IBS diarrhea. Serotonin modulators like elocitron can be used for IBS diarrhea, especially in women. It can reduce the gut motility and improve the symptoms of diarrhea. Eluxatiline is an opioid mu receptor agonist that is restricted for treating severe cases. Whenever overgrowth of bacteria is absorbed in the small intestine, few antibiotics can be used. Rifaximin is one of the antibiotics that can be used in IBS diarrhea to reduce overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. Sometimes the pain and the gut motility can also be controlled by the use of a few antidepressants. Tricyclic candidates present like amitriptyline, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like fluoxetine, or a few of the examples that can be used in the management of pain associated with IBS. These medications can work in two ways. They can reduce the pain status as well as they can reduce the anxiety that may be associated with IBS. Probiotics like lactobacillus and bifidobacterium can also be used in people with loss of gut flora. They can support the gut flora and reduce the symptoms like bloating. Psychological therapies. Cognitive behavioral therapy is another important treatment for IBS. It can be used to address the psychological factors that contribute to or worsen the symptoms of IBS. It mainly identifies the negative thought pattern in the people. It can be used to reduce the stress and anxiety. They're mainly linked with IBS. It can also improve the quality of life and can reduce the need for avoiding a food that triggers IBS symptoms. You can increase your adaptiveness and coping with a situation by controlling the negative thoughts and beliefs. It also involves relaxation techniques and stress management that help in relieving IBS symptoms. Gut-directed hypnotherapy is another one that involves few suggestions and relaxation techniques to influence the communication between the gut and your brain. It relieves the symptoms of IBS, like bloating, abdominal pain, and altered bowel habits. Relaxation techniques like meditation can also help reduce the stress. Psychological counseling for anxiety and depression can be used to control the symptoms of IBS. Even though it is a non-life-threatening condition, IBS is a chronic disorder that may persist for several years. Based on how it is controlled, it can impact the quality of your life and productivity, even your mental health. Depending on the medication is not only sufficient to relieve the symptoms. A change in lifestyle and proper dietary control can also be useful in relieving the symptoms of IBS. That's all about irritable bowel syndrome, its symptoms, causes, and possible treatments. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button if you really like this video. See you in the next video.